welcome back to my channel or if you're new around here welcome to my channel my name is Harriet it's very nice to meet you and today's video is going to be all about the books that I read in the month of June if you've been following along with the book series that I've got going along on my channel at the moment this year I have decided to try and read more and document that on my channel and talk about the books that I have read in the month prior to the video being uploaded and in the month of June I didn't read many again but I did read more than two books which at the moment seems to be my general amount of books that I can read in a month um, after January's whopping for me anyway six books that I read the rest of the month that followed suit was generally like two books this month I read more than two books so that's a small victory for me let's go on to talk about June's books that I read the first one was from that huge stack of books that I talked about that my mum gave me to read and it is gonna be this book it's a bit shiny I don't know if you'll be able to see that properly it's Now or Never by Carol Matthews and I don't think I've read any of her books before so this was a first for me and she has so many books honestly she's killing it look at how many books she's written like can you see that properly that whole list of books that she's written and I think my mum has read, read quite a lot of them Carol Matthews is a favourite of my mum's and like many <laughs> of the other books that she's read which usually involve a woman going through some sort of midlife crisis so she decides to do something about it. This book is that premise exactly except it involves twins. There are two twins, they are called Annie and Lauren and when we meet them they are attending their sister's 40th birthday party and her sister's super glamorous and they've always been very envious of her life because they sort of ended up being the ones that weren't as glamorous and just sort of plodded along with their lives not really anything exciting happening to them and they decide at this birthday party because they are 39 currently as we meet them and they're gonna be 40 in the next year they decide for the next year of their life they want to do much more exciting things they want to try and achieve amazing things in their life before they turn their grand old age of 40 so I think Lauren's was to finally end up fully in a relationship with her lover that she's been in a relationship sort of with for the last five years he's actually married with a family so it's an affair essentially and she wants him all to herself and she decides that that is the thing that she wants to achieve that year she wants to finally have him all to herself for him to have left his wife and his kids and to be starting a new life with her because she like wants kids her of her own and everything yada 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 whether that happens though you'll have to read the book to find out things kind of go a little bit off the rails a little bit with this book and then Annie she is sort of living a very boring life her kids are sort of in their late teens slash early 20s her husband is just super boring her at the moment and just likes fishing they don't really do anything exciting they just live in the same old routine that they've been living in for the whole time that they've been married and she's getting a, bit, getting a bit bored of that and the place that she works at have decided to do a charity trek in Machu Picchu in Peru and she decides that she wants to do it and it's about her persevering through this sudden wanderlust or just want or need to do something extraordinary in her life that's relatively unextraordinary at this moment in time whether these things happen you don't know you'll have to wait and find out lots of twists and turns in this book it's quite funny as well and yeah it wasn't bad I liked it uh so if you want to read a kind of funny sort of twist on your stereotypical woman going through midlife crisis does something about it book <laughs> that there seems to be a very large vast amount of out in the world this is a good one to do to read that type of book so that's it's now or never by carol matthews so the next book that i read was this book which is my book i got given this like two years ago by my mum and dad for christmas and it's i'll be there for you the one about friends by kelsey miller and to describe this book i don't know uh it's kind of like what's it say inside hold on a definitive retrospective of the TV phenomena. Yeah, I guess that's what you would call this. I love the TV show Friends. It's my favourite TV show. I just adore it. I know pretty much everything there is to know about it inside and out and I love behind the scenes stuff of anything really. I love watching that kind of stuff or like reading about it. I really loved the, the Friends reunion that was on TV recently because that just <laughs> made my heart soar with happiness seeing them all together again and finding out things that I didn't already know from behind the scenes things or I don't know backstage information or 
any of the DVD extras or the bloopers or interviews that I already had seen about Friends that added more to it. This one again I thought that's what this was gonna be which it is in some ways. It starts from the very beginning so with Marta Kaufman and Kevin Crane and the way that they met uh, in university, college I guess in America and they became writing partners and they started off in theatre writing and then they got beckoned over to California to do TV show writing. They had many many failed uh, pilots and TV shows before they came up with their idea of Friends and the beginnings of the makings of Friends and how they roped in Kevin Bright? David Bright? What's his name? Maybe it's David Crane and Kevin Bright. It is. It's David Crane, Kevin Bright, Marta Kaufman. Anyway, they started off rough I guess because there were so many different things that they were competing against towards the beginning of the show and it was basically about the things that they dealt with whilst they were writing the show, how it took off, casting the characters um, and various different things that happened, things that they faced now that it's become popular again and things like that but I also feel like this just goes off on a weird tangent sometimes. It Sometimes to me it feels like it's like a university uh, essay or dissertation or it's I don't know, a paper like of some sorts that I'm reading because it does have source notes and a bibliography at the end which I found really weird and at the bottom it does have a footer with like information and like it links to certain parts of the book. I was very lost sometimes reading this book, I just wanted to read about the backstage, behind the scenes of Friends, of stuff that I didn't really know. It did have some like information that I didn't already know which was quite fun uh, and I did like reading about how it started off because I didn't really know much about the inner beginnings of how Friends was written and how that took off at first because obviously it was made in 1994 and I was born in 1996 so I wasn't born when it was created and I was still quite young up until the point that it finished filming in 2004. So in 2004 I would have been seven or eight I want to say so I was still pretty young I had watched it at that point towards the end of the series because I would have probably watched it when I was quite young with my mum but then didn't fully get into it and watch like all of it until I was well until it was towards the end of the time the Friends was airing. So yeah, it was nice to see the things that I didn't know about because I was quite young at the time um, and 90s culture because obviously I mean I claim to be a 90s baby but I only really lived three years of it and I don't remember any of that so <laughs> shh don't tell anyone though. Yeah it was nice to see the kind of trends that took off because of Friends and stuff like that but yeah I just felt like it was a bit of a weird concept of a book and I feel like the person repeated themselves a lot they just needed to get to the point and I'm like just tell the story of this part of the book of whatever you're talking about and then get on with it you don't need to ramble on for another 20 pages about the same thing you just talked about in the last five pages you know you had rambled on for 18 pages <laughs> front and back so but yeah I did still like this book though it just wasn't what I was hoping it would be but I still enjoyed it because anything to do with friends I will soak up because I just oh, it's just one of those shows you know so that's I'll be there for you by Kelsey Miller so the last book that I read in the month of June was another of my mum's books and it is this book Last Night by I want to say it's Mari McFarlane can you see that I can't really pronounce that properly I think that's the way you say it sorry if I butchered your name but this book I loved it so much I read it in a couple days because it was just that good and that entertaining basically it is revolved around these four friends called Eve, Susie, Ed and Justin they've known each other since they were teenagers well Eve and Susie have known each other since they were kids, same with Ed and Justin and they became friends in sixth form and after that they were inseparable, they've pretty much grown up through life together and yeah it's just about their friendship when we first meet Eve who the book is told from the perspective of. We find out that somebody has died and when I was reading it I kind of felt like I knew who was gonna die, um, they didn't mention it at the start who it was that had passed away but then uh, a couple of chapters in we find out who it is and it is Susie. Susie dies when we meet the four of them as friends they're on a night out together and then they're all on the way home going their separate ways and Susie unfortunately gets run over on the way back to her house and it's about that sort of after effects of that happening and what kind of ripples that happen in different friendships or different other relationships or the way that they have been dealing with it and the way grief affects different people in different ways and yeah things that get weakened or broken slightly because of 
the after effects of this death and things that strengthen, unexpected things that happen, relationships, friendships that form because of grief bringing people together. It's not a sad book, well it is because towards the beginning obviously somebody has died but as they sort of come to terms with it more and you see the way that their friendship works and everything it can be quite funny and as well for Evie she can always feel like she has an inner monologue of what Susie would be judging her about different life choices or different things and different commentaries that she would have on certain situations that were going on it's quite funny in that way too but yeah it can be quite sad towards the start of the book but I really loved it I read it in a couple days like I said my mum did as well it's a really really good book I would thoroughly recommend this book so that's Last Night by Mari McFarlane. Sorry if I've just butchered your name again. So yeah, that is all the books that I read in the month of June. I can't believe we've already halfway through the year already. That's crazy. I only have, what, five more book videos to make now? That's wild. And then it'll be 2022. How did that happen? I'm excited to read more books and see what other books I stumble across that I end up loving and maybe that'll be something that you end up getting interested in too by watching these videos. Well that's what I hope that you take away from these videos anyway. If you have a book that you want to recommend to me um, leave it down below in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video if you did like the video and to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. It would mean an awful lot if you did and I will see you next time in another video. Good bye!